Hi, thanks for watching another video from Pro Audio Development. This is Rick Perry for RickCPerry.com. Uh, can't show you a whole lot about this. This is where I work. Uh, certain cars that I work on. I'm not going to tell you nothing about them or no details. Because it's a lot of R&D stuff. But I uh, just want to show you the Felix on the wall. Alright, look what just showed up. water package sixteen two mix wizard okay let's see here whoops I'm trying to cut this left-handed And then <clears throat> all right, right off the bat, look at that big thank you right there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, I want to thank you, Sweetwater, because, um, my guy Chris well maybe that's my representative anyway Chris was great they called me wanted to make sure that that's exactly what I wanted and uh, we went over some specs and details and uh, once we determined this is exactly what I needed then uh, he went on ahead and sent it out okay I didn't take it completely out of the plastic because I'm gonna take it home I'm still at work um, here's the, uh, famous faders all the way to the top when you're shipping. Um, I always do that. If you carry it, your belly or your belt will be right here and it'll bend the faders. So always push the faders up when you carry them. So anyway, what I like about this board is, uh, you can do individual fountain power. You have pads on each channel. There's your gain. You have a high pass. Yeah, there's your high shelf. You have a upper mid sweep and a lower mid sweep and then a low then you've got the four oxes they can all be pre let's see that one and two is pre three or four could be pre or post and then five and six is post and uh, so you've got your uh, left and right mains and then your mono or your sub feed I don't typically carry anything about subgroups so this is perfect for me so there we go the now let's uh, take it home and mount it in the rack. Okay, here we are at the mixer. This is my Mackie mixer, and it actually works, but the oxes are a little aggravating to me. The uh, three and four are post, and uh, the pots are all scratchy, so I was gonna take it apart and clean all the pots, but if I got gigs that come up between now and the time I finish cleaning the pots, I'm out of luck. So I'm going to install my new mixer under there. And I may clean this and sell it, whatever. Anyway, while I was at it, I picked up a Tascam CDRW. I think that's the uh, CDRW 900 SL. And I'm going to put it down here in the bottom. Okay, I got the mixer unpacked now. And I was looking at it and I was like, man, that sure does look wide, you know, to go in this rack. But I got to notice in a lot of mixers, when you buy them, you have to buy the 70 something, sometimes 30, sometimes $70 rails to mount it with. Well, what's cool about this board is you take four screws out and this side piece comes off and it's already got the plates on it. And you just store these away. So, that is a really, really cool feature. I like that. All right, I was right in the middle of getting ready to put my new mixer in place, and I actually took the side racks off of it and got ready to drop it into place. And this mixer stand is a seismic audio. You can buy them for like $70 on eBay, but don't buy it. They're junk. This one here, actually, if you look in here, you can see that I replaced the rack rails because 
they were too it's too wide here you can't get in 19 inch stuff in here it needs about an eighth of an inch cut off of each one of these now, luckily I'm a fabricator and I'll take this top piece to work with me tomorrow and I can cut this off but if this is just like someone who does not have power tools then this to this whole rack is totally useless you can't put anything in it I've got another one out in the building another mixer zone and all of this gear down here none of it will fit at all so don't buy these seismic audio mixer racks unless you're handy with power tools okay we're back from the shop now and I trimmed off some off of the sides here are the pieces so that's about an eighth of an inch and then the blade that I used was a 1 16th wide so there's 3 16ths of an inch that I trimmed off of it so now let's fit the con console to see if it'll fit but while I'm at it I just want to show you if you can see this texture I love this texture a little scratch there but that's why you buy touch up paint if you see that texture there that's great what this is is textured paint and uh, I love this for the pro audio scene it's a 7220 black that's the number on it it's a perfect textured finish it matches most of all pro audio gear if you paint it with this it'll all look the same I've got the clips to insert into here that I've got to snap in so I'll have to put the board in place and mark where the clips go pull the board off install all the clips and then put the board back on okay here are the clips I bought a bag of these I guess there was like 20 or 30 in here and I bought a bag on eBay cheap I mean I don't know how much I don't remember it's like 10 or 15 dollars or something free shipping and anyway so they got this little design here and they just uh, they just snap in from the back you just come over here and you put them in from the back side they snap in and then the bolt from the front and I'll show you how that works in a minute okay we got the board in place here and dropped right into place and the holes line up I was going to show you these clips here and um, I don't think I can actually install this with the board in place so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you right here that you take these clips and see if I can do this one handed here put it in that way whoops yeah it's going to be hard to do here I need to break out the tripod put it in that way and then push it come on almost There we go. And that's how the clip sits into place. I was just going to go through some of the little rack stuff here that I've got. I've got this terrible um, seismic audio rack that I've had to work on. But I've modified it and I finally got it the way I want it. So what I've got here is I've got my little power conditioner and I've got the uh, the only Behringer equipment that I have which is this EQ and that's my aux 1 and 2 for the wedges and I've got the SPX 990 I've got a Lisa's Microverb 3 um, I usually just put, use it just for the snare and a 3630 compressor with gate and that's both of those I just use for vocals and the Tascam CDRW 900 SL okay so on the back just going to show you right quick here um this is just temporary because I was just doing some testing but basically uh, 15 and 16 are what I'm going to use for my effect returns now it does have built in effects in it so 15 will be my special uh, effects vocals and 16 will be that microverb 3 which is on a direct out for the snare so my aux 1 and 2 is reserved for the wedge 1 and 2 um, my aux 5 here this is going to be the special effects going to the SPX 990 
Ox 3 and 4 will be open in case someone brings their in ears. Um, so basically it's just cables for kind of hanging. It's not too awful bad. This is my wedge monitor, Ox 1 and 2. And then this is my mains, left, right, and mono. And like this is just a patch cable that goes to this little crate amp because I'm doing some testing in here. I've got a wedge monitor set up over here. And <clears throat> the little crate amp is just powering uh, the wedge monitor so I don't have to drag all my power amps in here. I've got my little talk back mic here and I drilled a hole through it and mounted a mic clip on there so now if my talk back mic is just right there I can grab it take it off and use it and uh, I've got the talk back on the XLR side of this so since this is my effect return if I push that in that's I'm running the effects if I pull it out then it's going to XLR so the only time I really need talk back is during the sound check during the show boom pop that in and these two faders are my effects if I need the extra channels I can just take those out so that's my my setup and can't wait to take it to a gig and try it out if you got any questions just leave me a comment below or go to my website rickcperry.com and uh, hopefully I'll post a tech blog of this thing in action can't wait to use it